Um, just to say, uh, Tim's name's easier to remember than mine's. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, so I think um, we're, we're at a good point. I, wanted to, I do want to discuss something that we didn't get a chance to discuss in the last class, which was uh, opening up um, eBooks um, as an archive. This I'll just show you guys how to do it. Um, it's not something that you'll need to do often, but it is important for uh, what John will be talking about in the second hour, uh, because he'll be opening up the, um, an eBook example and he'll be showing you things and I don't want you guys to get like, hey, what is, what is this? So I'll just go ahead and share my screen now, Oop. and so um, an EPUB file is really just um, you can think of it like a zip file that sort of contains everything um, that an ebook reader will then you know parse and display to you as as it want to do right so you can actually without any special tools or anything else you can take an ebook and I'll show you here based on the ebook that we were working on before. You can take an ebook um, and unzip it, right? And so uh, we use Seven Zip um, here, um, but I believe any um, any archiving of software will work. So um, if you're using Seven Zip, you go to Seven Zip and extract files. It'll bring up this nice little dialog box here. You hit OK, and then you'll see that you'll have a folder named exactly as your uh, yeah, stuff in Expander will work for Macs, as Tim has said in the chat. Um, and you'll see that you'll have a folder named exactly as your EPUB uh, file. So if you look inside, you'll see that this is what the guts of an EPUB look like. Um, first, you have this uh, meta information folder, meta INF, right? And in here, you'll have this container XML file, and all this does, um, it just says that this is an EPUB file the same thing as this mime type file you oftentimes don't have to worry about uh, modifying these or looking at these in in any sense they're just there uh, to indicate to an epub reader um, that this is in fact an epub and not just a regular archive um, the oebps folder um, is the folder that contains everything so you'll have your content inside of these um, XHTML files. You have your CSS, which we discussed uh, last, last time, which is what essentially tells the EPUB reader how to display um, um, the information, the content of your textbook. Um, it's the same thing as it, as it works online. Um, websites have CSSs that tell the, um, the browser that you're using how to display the website. So it's the same concept, um, same idea uh, here. And here you have two TOC files, which um, depending on the ebook reader, uh, will display the um, table of content um, information, right? And then you have the content.opf um, uh, file, and that file just tells you, um, just tells the ebook, uh, EPUB reader the order of, um, uh, in which to display content, and also um, what content is contained within this uh, EPUB file. So we don't need to get too um, technical here. I just wanted you guys to know that you can do this and I'll just show you real quickly what each of these files um, contain. Let me just go ahead and open um, Sublime here and then what I'll do is I'm actually going to drag the entire folder into Sublime. Sublime has this nice little sidebar view which if you do not have that on Sublime you can just go to view sidebar and mine says hide sidebar. If you don't have it displayed, it will say um, show sidebar. And you'll see he things here. And you can actually navigate to um, all the different folders with all the different files within a folder without actually having to open them. So I'll just go ahead and make this bigger, right? And so you'll see here the content.opf uh, um, file contains um, metadata for uh, the folder. This is actually populated from that. Um, area where you put in, you know, the title, the author, the ISBN, and all that on the hub. And then you'll see here, um, it gives you sort of a, this manifest, which essentially gives a listing of every uh, file contained within um, that um, EPUB. So you have all your um, XHTML files, you have your NCX files, your TLC file, and you have all your images listed here, and the CSS as well. The spine just tells you the order in which things 
um, will display. So you can actually rearrange this and the EPUB reader will display things in the order that you dictate. We often here at Scribe have it set up so that the hub uh, generates this uh, for you um, based upon the information that you've placed in the hub. That's why we don't have to go uh, too in depth. A long time ago, we would actually have to do that manually. Um, good thing that those days are gone. So um, if you look at um, the next file, is this is our CSS. And as we showed last time, all this does is essentially give you a list of the styles and how the EPUB reader should um, display it. So anything with the code line, um, structure uh, should have a margin top of 1.5 EM spaces and so on and so forth. But we don't need to get into too in depth into this because um, unless you want to do this uh, as a project manager, and this is sort of, sort of will segue into uh, what we're gonna talk, to, uh, talk about next, um, unless you want to do it as a project manager, you don't need to go into the CSS and like fix things around. You could always send that to us or you can have somebody on your team uh, who is the expert um, who will work on this for you. Um, the XHTML files, as I said, contain the content, as you see here. Um, this is our cover page. Um, here, number seven is the actual content of the book because all of this is the front matter from one to six. Um, and the NCX file and the toc.xhtml file contain just um, that interactive table of contents that you often see, like for example, on the iPad, um, when you click on that button um, that shows you the contents and then you're able to just click, for example, copyright page and it takes you directly to the copyright page. So those, those are the guts of, uh, of an EPUB uh, file. Uh, does anybody have any questions at this point? Let me just close out of that. And I'll wait just a moment for anyone who may, may have a question. Again, this is stuff that's good to know, but you know, not something that you need or necessarily um, need to um, worry too much about. On this offer, I feel like there are maybe two occasions where it would be helpful to open it up and adjust things like that. Um, on most occasions, you're not going to be working like in the EPUB file or in those HTML files because all the content and all the styling has come from that HTML file that we made. Um, if you don't have a CSS file ready, you, you don't necessarily need one because the hub is going to insert a default CSS automatically. Uh, that could be a good starting point, but there may be times when you want to insert additional metadata that isn't available via the um, field in the hub. So that OPF file that uh, that has info about the ISBN, the publisher, <clears throat> the copyright date. There may be some additional fields that you want to include related to uh, the accessibility or maybe related to the press or things like that that you can insert but which aren't available yet as hub fields. You may want to open up the EPUB, insert those into the OPF, and then use a, there's a, a repackaging um, tool on the hub you would just take all the files for the EPUB, drop it into that, and it'll rezip as an EPUB. So yeah, maybe slight changes to CSS would be helpful. Um, that relates back to what we did last week where we were looking at uh, the EPUB QC. Some of you guys were noting, well, that's a little, that should be bold. That would be helpful if that wasn't right aligned, maybe a little bit more space above. Those are all changes we'd make in CSS. And so you may find it helpful to take it down, unzip it, adjust something to make sure that like now this style is going to be bold. Now this style is going to have this many points above it and then take it back into the hub and rezip it. And you can then keep that CSS file and for every other book you're going to use it on, upload it like you would a normal file so that you're not constantly taking it down, making the same adjustments and rezipping, but um, changing some metadata in the OPS and making adjustments to the CSS would be two good occasions to know where those files are living and how to access them in your EPUB. Okay. So does anybody have any questions based upon what, what Tim has introduced or what we just talked about EPUB? If not, we'll continue on.